One group of animals that's very under-recorded are the small mammals and we can use something like traps to help us find these mammals. I've got Tony Parker here with us today who's a, a county mammal recorder and he's going to tell us a bit about these mammal traps. So Tony, can you tell us a bit, little bit about each type? Yes, Helen. What we've got, we've got the two different types of mammal trap which most people generally use. This metal one is what's called a Longworth trap which has been in use for over 60 years or more. And this is a sort of which many mammal, professional mammal people use. The one you've got is a smaller, lighter plastic trap called a trip trap, which is a lot cheaper, but not as sort of easy to use as this one, not as versatile. Both have basically on the same principle. There's a sort of nest, nest or bed chamber, if you like, at the rear end, and an entrance tunnel which fits into it. And at the end of the entrance tunnel, there's a sort of trap door. And at the end of the entrance tunnel, there's a sort of trip mechanism. Okay. In this case, it's a wire going across the chip, across the tunnel. In your case, you've got a plastic treadle. Oh, I can see that one though, through there. Yes. And in each case, you place these at a certain site where you think a small mammal might be. Obviously, you've set up baited and with some bedding material. The small mammal enter, enters through the, ent the tunnel, trips the mechanism at the end, and the trap door shuts behind it. And then you can come back early morning or every you're running your trapping session to empty the trap check what mammals are in there and weigh them and sex them and do any other measurements you need to do. Okay Tony so first things first what are we going to put in the trap for the mammals? Well as bedding material I've got a sort of small bag of hay which you just sort of put a handful in. And that's for them to yeah, sleep this is, in? Yeah this serves the purpose of it gives them something to sleep in and also mice and voles will eat it. Okay. But just add some extra food. I've got some wild bird food here. Anything with bits of grain or fruit or whatever, you can add a couple of spoonfuls. That'll, again, that's for the mice and voles. Give them to eat overnight. And then for shrews, you need to make special provision because being carnivorous, and they have a high, very high metabolic rate, which means they have to feed virtually every four hours, mm. or they will die in the trap. So we have to put some food in, especially for shrews. One option is to use cat food, but that is very messy and, not, and does seem to attract ants on a hot day, which okay. is not very pleasant. But the, the one we most use are casters, okay. which are these things, are what, basically what maggots turn into. Lovely. <laughs> And if you leave them long enough, they'll turn into flies, so be careful with these. You can get these from any fishing tackle shop. Okay, so we're not actually trapping for shrews, but these are just in case they get Yes, you have to provision accident. for shrews going into the trap, otherwise you'd have to have a small hole in the trap to let the shrews out. But if you want to do a proper survey and trap shrews to find if they are in an area, then this is a sort of process you have to do. So you just sort of spoonful of these, and there you are, the trap set with bedding material and bait. Okay so Tony now we've got the bedding and the food in the trap how do we put the trap together? Well it's just a matter of fitting the entrance tunnel into the bed chamber. Well it's a matter of getting that flap of metal there under that this, this sort of plate at the front of the top of the trap. And so you're it, pushing it in at yes. an angle? Yes and at the bottom you'll see these four pegs on the floor of the trap Okay. You jam the end of this against the pegs and that clips in place so you have the trap set. It's just a matter of then of opening the door, making sure it's locked, okay. like so, and then All we right. can sort of place the trap in a suitable location. So it's ready to go? Ready to go. Okay, so Tony, now we've got to consider something to do with the location. Basically what you're looking for is any site that looks like it's used by a small mammal. Okay. We're looking at runs in vegetation, fallen tree logs, tree roots, anything like that. You, what you need to make sure is that the trap entrance is at ground level. So that has to be sort of level with the ground like so. So that's on the floor and the back sticks up? Yeah, slightly. the back does stick up. This, this means any rain water that gets on it will drain off, which is, okay. stops it getting into the trap itself. Also you need to mark it with something so you can find it easily at the end of the trapping session. You can use a bamboo stick or tie a piece of rope or string around some nearby vegetation. Because they're easy to lose otherwise. They are very easy to lose. We know and, from you don't, experience. and you don't want to lose them for too long because sometimes 
animals will go in there and get trapped and they can't get can't get out again which is not something you want okay so we think this is a good location then this is as good a location as any it's just a matter of laying the trap down checking the door still up <laughs> yes the door on some old traps does tend to come become a bit loose if used for a long period of time and do we need to cover it over at all if you're trapping in public areas where members of the public might come across a trap, it is usually a not good idea to cover it. Also, if you're doing it on a hot day, it gives it a bit of shade for anything that goes in there. If you're trapping during the daytime, which will happen occasionally on some surveys. Okay. But once it's in place, it's just a matter of inserting your marker, and then you can leave that to you need to come and empty it either the following morning or the following evening. Okay, so we've set our trap now, but when you're actually doing this for real, what time would you set it and when do you need to come and collect it to? Normally we'd set it late, late afternoon, early evening, depending on time of year. Okay. Then you come and generally check them first thing in the morning. If you're running a long session, then you check them in the evening as well and perhaps the following morning. Okay, so you just leave them out and keep going back yeah. and check Yeah, obviously you'll release any animals that are in there and replace the bed food and bedding. Okay. So any other animals can go in there and there won't be any problems. And do you need to consider if the weather's different, what do you need to think about? Yes, it's best not to trap when there's snow on the ground or if it's a very hot day, because that can make the life uncomfortable for any animals that are in the traps. Okay. And um, any other issues to think about when we're trapping? Well, if you're going to trap for shrews deliberately for some scientific research or whatever, then you will need a licence from Natural England which will cover that. If you're just doing a general mammal survey, then as long as you make provision for shrews going in the traps, you should be okay, you should be covered. Also, just make sure when you're finished, you wash your hands, especially when you've de dealt with your mammals, because they can sort of let you know. They, can either, they will try and bite you if you handle them, and they'll sort of defecate or urinate on you. <laughs> you're not careful. So, so make sure you wash your hands thoroughly when you've carried out the mammal trapping. And washing the traps out, just hot water will do. Don't use any chemicals, it does leave a funny smell which can be off-potting to some species. Okay, so just hot water to clean them out yeah. and then they're ready to use again? Yes, as often as you like. Okay, so that's the end of the introduction to the small mammal trapping today. So, is there any other information you can find out about the actual small mammals themselves? Well, there are training courses run by most mammal groups, including the Merseyside and West Lancashire group. We do run, run training calls in the sort of pro, process of small mammal trapping and legislation and how to go about setting up a small mammal survey. So if you need any more advice, just get in touch with Biobank and they'll put you onto the lo your local mammal group. And they've also got some traps that they can borrow as well. So there's no reason not to get involved in small mammal trapping.